Okay, so today we are going to talk about tuberculosis. Whenever an asymptomatic patient comes to you and you suspect that patient was exposed to TB, the first thing that you need to do is you have to do purified protein derivative test, PPD test. What you do in PPD is you take the purified protein from the bacteria of mycobacterium tuberculosis and you inject it into the skin of patient. If patient was exposed to tuberculosis in past, his immune cells, his T cells will be sensitized to it. And those T cells will mount up a response against that purified protein and that will form an induration. If patient was exposed to TB, there will be an induration and you measure that size of induration and according to size of that induration, you render the patient PPD positive or PPD negative. We classify patient into three groups. Patients who have an induration greater than 5 millimeter or equal to 5 millimeter will be considered positive if they are close contacts. The people who are taking care of patients of tuberculosis, if the patient is a steroid user whose immune system is suppressed and they cannot mount up enough uh, response against that purified protein that their induration is small. If patient has HIV immunosuppressed, if patient is having organ transplant and they are taking immunosuppressants which is causing a smaller induration that smaller induration will be considered positive that five millimeter induration will be considered positive in such patient because these are the patient who are high risk these are they, these patients are immunosuppressed and they cannot mount up a bigger induration so a smaller induration will be considered a positive one in these patients and then there is a group in which uh, induration greater than 10 millimeter will be considered positive. Those are the patients who are homeless, alcoholics, healthcare worker, like doctors, nurses, immigrants, IV drug users. These are the patients, they are high risk group. These, these can be exposed to uh, tuberculosis and induration of a uh, greater than 10 millimeter will be considered positive in them. Then there is a patient who has not been exposed to tuberculosis. There, there are no risk factors. There are no risk factors and there has been no exposure to TB. In such patients, a duration greater than 15 millimeter will be considered positive. It depends upon the risk factors present in a patient. If patient is immunosuppressed, an induration of greater than 5 millimeter will be even considered positive. If patient is, is exposed, is, is a high risk group, is exposed to TB patients, in those patients, a great, uh, in a duration greater than 10 millimeter will be considered positive. And those patients who are not at increased risk, who are not ex exposed to tuberculosis, who are not immunosuppressed, an induration of greater than 15 millimeter will be considered positive. So you do PPD test and you get a positive PPD. This means the patient was exposed to tuberculosis. If PPD is negative, it means patient was not exposed to tuberculosis. If patient was not exposed to tuberculosis, it does not mean you have to stop over here. You have to go for an annual screen chest x-ray every year. Every year you do an annual chest x-ray that the patient does not develop tuberculosis. If the patient is a healthcare worker and their PPD is negative, then you repeat PPD. You repeat PPD within two weeks to avoid any false negative. If the PPD was negative and patient is a healthcare worker and you are highly suspicious that this patient might have a false negative test, you repeat PPD within two weeks and this is called a two-staging, two-stage testing. This is two-stage testing in which you do PPD two times within two weeks and you, if the PPD is positive the next time, it means patient was exposed. If it is negative again, it means patient was not exposed and it is done in healthcare workers. If PPD is positive, it means patient was exposed but it does not mean that the patient is actively having TB. So to see whether this patient actively has TB or not, you have to go for chest X-ray. In chest X-ray, you see that the patient is active, it has an active TB or patient has latent TB. Chest X-ray can be like this, in which you see hilar lymphadenopathies on both sides and you see these opacities. You can also find cavity, cavity lesion in tuberculosis. You do chest x-ray, you know that the patient has active TB. And if it is negative, it means patient has latent TB. Patient was exposed to tuberculosis, but the patient is not infectious right now. Patient is not having active symptoms. So if patient has active TB, chest x-ray is not enough. 
chest x-ray is not enough to diagnose a patient with active tb so you, you do what you do next is you take their sputum and you grow acid fast bacilli you do acid fast bacilli staining plus you also do acid fast bacilli sculpture how do you take that sputum you take three samples minimum of eight hours apart and one must be early morning sample and you stain them and you culture them culture usually takes six weeks but staining takes lesser time so you can easily diagnose a patient with active tb with both chest x-ray and uh, staining and culture now if staining and culture is positive it means patient has active tb this is a specific test if it is negative it means patient has having latent tb patient was exposed to past was exposed in tuber uh, to tuberculosis in past but is not actively having any symptoms is not having active tb right now but there is a risk that this patient will get converted into an active form active disease because that latent tb carries a risk of conversion to an active tb form sometimes it happens that afb is negative our culture is negative but you are highly suspicious you are quite sure that this patient has active tb because patient is showing symptoms of tuberculosis weight loss fever hemoptysis night sweats so if afb is negative or culture is negative or sometime it happens that the patient cannot produce sputum for uh, for staining and culture in such patients what you do is in such high suspicious patients what you do next is you go for fiber optic bronchoscopy in fiber optic bronchoscopy what you do is you get inside the lungs with a bronchoscope and you take samples from there and those samples are then cultured and stained and if those are negative it means it was latent tb it is it was not an active tb or if a sputum patient cannot produce sputum so you go for fiber optic bronchoscopy now patient has latent tb latent tb can convert into active tb so what you do is you put patient on isoniazid for 9 months you put patient on isoniazid for 9 months to kill all the residual mycobacterium if ever there is a mycobacterium that caused that ppd to be positive that caused that chest x ray to be positive you kill that uh, bacteria with isoniazid for 9 months with vitamin b6 because isoniazid causes excretion of vi uh, vitamin b6 isoniazid causes loss of vitamin b6 that loss causes peripheral neuropathy so you always give b6 with isoniazid if patient has active tb now in active tb you have to treat this patient for treatment there is a 6 month therapy in 6 month therapy there are two phases in which you divide the therapy first phase is of 2 months and you give ripe in that ripe rifampin isoniazid pyrazinamide ethambutol first phase with ripe for 2 months second phase ripe for 4 months only rifampin and isoniazid for 4 months 6 months therapy first phase ripe second phase ripe then there is another patient another patient who has active tb with aids with hiv hiv patients are highly susceptible of getting tuberculosis because they are immunocompromised treatment is just the same as active tb but with the difference that in the second phase instead of rifampin we give rifabutin because these patients cannot tolerate rifampin for a longer time so in second phase rifam instead of rifampin rifabutin is given other than that rifa why rifabutin rifabutin kills mycobacterium tuberculosis as well as mycobacterium avium so mycobacterium avium causes infection in immunocompromised hiv patients so we are actually killing two birds with the same stone then there is a patient who is pregnant a pregnant patient has same treatment as active tb with a little difference that strepto you cannot give streptomycin streptomycin is an anti tuberculous drug that is usually given for treatment of tb but you should know that streptomycin cannot be given in tuberculosis because it is fetotoxic then there is a patient who has meningitis with tuberculosis patient who has pericarditis with tuberculosis in such patients you have to give same treatment as active tb but that same treatment is for 12 months that same treatment is for 12 months with steroids you add steroids to the treatment 
So this was an asymptomatic patient in which you did PPD test and then you then you did chest X-ray to see whether they have active TB or latent TB. Then there is a symptomatic patient, a patient who comes with hemoptysis, cough, fever, night sweats. A symptomatic patient. In a symptomatic patient, you directly do chest X-ray and acid fast bacilli because you do not have time to wait for PPD results to come back. You you cannot wait for 48 to 72 hours for the induration to form. So you directly go for chest X-ray and you directly go for acid pass bacilli staining and culture. Rest is just the same as an asymptomatic patient. Other than that, in PPD test, purified protein derivative test, you have to wait for 48 to 72 hours. You measure the induration and you have to classify patients into three groups, five millimeter, 15 and 10 millimeter. And then you can say whether it is positive or not. Other than that, if a person is vaccinated for BCG, they will always be PPD positive. If a person is vaccinated for BCG, they will always be PPD positive, which is a false positive. So to counter these flaws of uh, PPD test, another test is uh, there, which is interferon gamma release assay, IGRA test. In IGRA test, it directly tells you whether the patient has positive exposure or negative exposure. It does not, you do not have to classify a patient, you do not have to measure any induration. It directly tells you whether it has positive exposure, patient has a negative exposure or positive. So IGRA is a better test than PPD. Other than that, the good thing about IGRA test is there is no false positive for a patient who is vaccinated for BCG. It is not affected by BCG vaccination. So this is IGRA. Then there is another new modality being used for uh, instead of culture and acid vas bacilli staining, that is NAT, nuclear acid amplification testing, PCR for acid fast bacilli. PCR is being done, that is a new modality. Now we have to discuss some drug side effects. Whenever you start uh, anti tuberculous medication, there are certain side effects that you have to look after. Isoniazid causes peripheral neuropathy because we said it causes excretion of vitamin B6, and that excretion of vitamin B6 results in peripheral neuropathy, so you have to supplement it with vitamin B6. Rifampine causes orange color secretions, orange color tears, orange color urine. So uh, you have to look that if patient is using uh, contact lenses, these orange color secretion can stain contact lens that you have to uh, consider that fact as well. If patient is taking pyrazinamide, pyrazinamide causes hyperuricemia. So you have to look uh, in patients who have gout. If gout becomes symptomatic, only then a symptomatic gout is to be treated if patient is taking pyrazinamide, but pyrazinamide rarely causes hyperuricemia uh, to an extent that it is symptomatic. Ethambutol causes optic neuritis, red-green color blindness. So it must be preceded by a baseline eye and vision exam before you start ethambutol. Other than that, all anti-tuberculous drugs cause hepatotoxicity, except except streptomycin. In summary, an asymptomatic patient came to you and you did PPT testing, or you can also do interferon gamma release assay. If positive, it means patient is exposed to tuberculosis. If negative, it means patient is unexposed to tuberculosis. If patient is not exposed to tuberculosis, you do annual screen chest X-ray. And if patient is a healthcare worker, to avoid false negative, we, do, uh, we repeat PPD and it is called two-stage testing. If patient is exposed, you directly go for chest X-ray and acid fast bacilli staining and culture to see whether this TB is active or not, or it is latent. If TB is active, you go for treatment. If it is latent, you give isoniazid for nine months with vitamin B6. If it is latent and you are suspicious that this patient has active TB and the cultures came out to be negative, our patient is unable to produce sputum. So in such patients, you directly go for fiber optic bronchoscopy. You take a sample from, through bronchoscopy into, from the lungs and you sample that, you culture that and you stain that. If TB is active uh, and it is positive, the, you treat it with six months therapy with first phase with RIPE for two months, second phase RIPE for four months. If TB is with HIV AIDS, you replace a rifampine with isorifabutin in the second phase of treatment. In pregnancy, this, this is the same treatment as active TB, but streptomycin is to be avoided because it is fetotoxic. In TB meningitis, if TB is associated with meningitis or pericarditis, it is the same treatment as active TB, but for 12 months, 
with steroids. So this is it for tuberculosis. Thank you very much.